Hi everyone, welcome to Becky's Crafts and Goodies. Today we're going to decorate this box and this came from the works and it was £7. Unfortunately I've lost the footage where I started to paint the box um, but I haven't lost the bulk of the material so we can still share that with you now. So all I did was remove the hardware and paint it in some brown acrylic paint and this is where we went from here. This is all dry now and what I'm going to do is to put some rice paper on the front of the, the box or the book so I'll paint, first step I'll do is I'll paint that probably white. I'll put over, um, stick that on the top and then I'll put the mouldings round as well. But I think I might paint the mouldings a brown colour just in case I want to distress them. And then it will match in with the, with the other side there. It's so warm in here, I've just had to put the fan on. I'll try to switch it off when I'm filming because of background noise but it's absolutely baking i think it's still about 30 degrees so what i'm going to do is put some of this matte finish over the top of this and then we're going to stick down the rice paper and i've cut the rice paper a bit smaller than needed because i'm going to put the edge in round if if i was going to pull it all the way to the edge what i'd do is i wouldn't cut anything out i'd just lay the rice paper over the top and then i'd do the usual sandpaper little trick around the edge if you wanted to go straight to the edge so the the bits that I've cut out are uh, probably not straight but it doesn't matter because I'm going to put a border around them so I'm not fussed about that so we'll put that over the top here put it that way up let's just try and get that straight it's drying so quickly that's the only thing Let's put that down a bit so you can see. And then what we can do is go over it with a bit more of the matte finish over the top. And this particular rice paper had some scrolling around the edge. So what I did is I kind of cut it to the size to get rid of all the scrolling. So I thought if I can't have all of it, then really I shouldn't have any. So I think it would look odd. So if this was a napkin... I wouldn't be as rough with it. I would be a bit more careful and I'd have maybe a plastic sheet over the top. But with a rice paper, you can be a bit rougher with it. So that is this section. And what we'll be doing is we'll be leaving this to dry. And again, in this heat, it will dry super duper quick. And I will make the moulds next while this is drying. So we'll just put that to one side, but it's coming on quite nicely. Let's put that in some water. And this is the mould that I'm using. It's Regal Trimmings. It's from Redesign with Prima. So they do some really nice products. And I think I might use this one here, this second one in, like a twisted bit of rope. So again... You just do the same as we did before if you need to you can put some corn flour in let me just show you I've got some down here so you just sprinkle a little bit in the mold I'm going to tap it out as well to get rid of the excess and this especially with this weather I'm not sure how it will turn out and you get your your clay and you pop that in here You go all the way down. I'm just going to push it in the mould a little bit and then I'll get some of the extra bits off. So we'll just turn this out and I tend to bowl, bend the mould and then just let it kind of bend back on itself so you're not bending the actual clay itself that much. 
and there you've got your rope effect and what I'm going to do is to paint that brown again it will dry really really quickly in this heat and then I'll pop it on here like that I might have to maybe make up a little more or I'll or I'll go a little bit short of the edge because I think it looks quite nice not going to the edge let me show you to the edge there there's the edge but I think it looks quite cool going in a little bit but we can sort all these bits out so we're going to do like some different distressing things on it anyway so I'll make a few more of these I'm probably have to make one two maybe get away with three more depends how these corners go I might have to do a bit of patching up um, but I'll do that and I'll paint these in the same brown it's just the same brown paint that I used before and you just go over it and we're going to stick these on before they dry and um, we'll use some strong normal kind of like trade PVA and we've used that before so don't use the kids PVA use the trade grade and I'll stick on all four and I won't be leaving these brown I will be going over them with a cream and we can then we've got the option to distress them and have a little bit of the brown color underneath come through if we want to so what I'll do now is I will do the rest of them and then stick them on and then we'll do the next bit. So I've gone round that, stuck it all on, that's just drying now and what I'm going to do is to go over the brown section on the other side with this crackle medium. This is the one step crackle. So I'm just literally going around all the sides. I've done the box here at the bottom and the sides there and I've just got this little section to do so I'm just going to go over that let that dry and then we'll go over it with some cream and then what that will do is that will then give it a nice crackle effect I'm just going to give you a recap of where we are it's the next day now so what I did is obviously I went over parts or most of the outside of the box with the crackle um, just on the places that I wanted to get the crackle effect and what I've decided to do so this is let me just get it around the right way that's like the inside of the book and then that goes on the top like that so that's as it stands at the moment and what I thought would look really cool is when you open it up like that I thought it'd be really nice to have some kind of script or something that looks like a book inside so I've looked through my rice paper and I found a couple of bits like this. Now, I haven't got two that are the same, but I thought this side would look really nice. And I like the fact that it's kind of a bit mismatched as well. I think that looks really cool. So what I'm going to do is exactly the same that I did with, with the top of it. I'm going to put some creamy paint underneath. Just once that dries, I'm going to do exactly the same thing and cut this to size and stick that in there so when the book the book opens it actually looks like it's got text in there and I'll do exactly the same thing with that side but obviously the text is going to look a little bit different but I think that'll be quite nice so we'll do that now um, and then we'll start and address the the crackle okay so I've started painting the bottom part and I'm thinking that I should paint the sides while I'm doing this because if I've just painted the bottom, it's going to be really hard to get a nice crisp edge around. So what I'm going to do is bring it up the sides as well at the same time, because I don't think I'm going to crackle the inside. I might just like distress it in certain areas, um, but I think I'll bring the cream up and then that will save me a, a job later on. So I'll do that on both sides. So I'll do this part and I'll do the side like those bits as well if you see what I mean so we'll get this done hopefully it won't take too long to dry so weather's quite nice hope you're all okay as well I know a few of you have mentioned that well you're enjoying my shopping trips and a few of you have mentioned that you will be finishing shielding in August and I know that lots of you are, are quite anxious about that and that is completely understandable 
completely normal so don't give yourself a hard time if you feel really anxious and really worried about going out because it just means you're human obviously we've been put in this very very strange situation for a few months and you're bound to feel anxious and nervous and even a bit scared so just take little steps little bits at a time maybe go outside for a walk or something first and then do you know maybe introduce shopping or something as the time goes on when you feel a little bit more comfortable i remember the first time i went out shopping i was i was really really worried actually i was quite nervous but it's like anything you just have to do it bit by bit and be brave and uh, know that things will get better right so this doesn't have to be like the best paint job in the world because we are going to you know we are going to be covering it so you don't have to worry too much and then I think probably what I'll do is I'll leave this for a minute paint the other side and then we'll stick the rice paper in and it won't matter actually if the rice paper doesn't properly cover to the sides or if I measure it wrong because we can always do a bit of distressing that's why I like this sort of thing you can you can distress it and it doesn't matter it all looks like it's supposed to look like you know that in the first place right I'll paint this and then we'll let it dry and then we'll just stick down the rice paper Okay, so as I'm going round, I've decided to do this top ledge as well. And this hasn't got any crackle on, so I thought I may as well get all that done while I'm doing it. And then what I'll do is I'll go over that these tops and the sides there. Not I don't necessarily need to go over the bottom part because that's going to be covered in the rice paper, but I'll go over these bits just so it's um, a more neat to finish and it looks sort of more of an even kind of cover and I'll, I will distress these bits because we've got the brown underneath we can actually you know just distress them so I just wanted to quickly hop on and show you that I'm doing these edges as well okay, so we'll just stick this middle part on now I'm just going to get some of the fairy chic matte finish put that down the bottom and I've actually done the other side as well so I'll show you that one in a minute and I think it looks quite nice being a little bit sort of patchwork here I think it looks pretty cool so we'll just stick this stick all this glue down make sure you put plenty on but not too much and if you do get any wrinkles it, it actually doesn't matter because of the nature of what we're trying to achieve so look this one in I think that looks quite nice. I don't know what you think, but it definitely kind of gives it that book, that book feel. I'll just go over it with a bit more of this as well. Again, if this was a napkin, don't go straight over it with any kind of glue until it's dry because it will rip it. You've got to be careful with the rice paper, but just not as careful. If you're a bit clumsy, then it's probably easier to work with. So that's the inside of the the kind of the book or the box. And then I'll show you the other side. I've done this one. That's in the other paper. So you've got, I like it the way it's a bit patchworky. I think it, I'm glad I've, I didn't have two sheets of this because I just think it looks nicer um, having it a bit different. So obviously when you open it, you're going to have that and it's going to sort of look like a book. Um, so they obviously need to dry. Um, and what we're going to do next, the next step, will be to paint these side bits. So these are the ones that have got the crackle on. So we'll put some paint on those. And also, then we need to paint this top part. So I'll be painting... Actually, I might do that. Start and do that now. <clears throat> so I'll get my brush. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to also paint this side here I'm going to paint this cream 
and then we will more than likely crackle effect this so if we get any smudges of paint on here it won't matter because we're going to crackle it and we're going to sort of distress it with some kind of patina or paste or something like that so this kind of look is made up of stages so it's sort of you do it one stage you paint it you know you put your paper on and it's all made up of sort of layering and that's what gives you the look and um, because I've painted these brown if we want to it gives us the option to sort of distress it bring a little bit of the brown through but the reason I want to crackle this is just because I want it to to blend in a little bit more with the sides so the sides just don't look a bit weird being all crackly and then and then you sort of got this top bit so I'll paint all this and then the next thing we'll do is we'll paint the sides and get the crackle effect so this is all done. I'm really pleased actually with how, how that's coming on and what it looks like. It's really nice. So we're going to do the crackle effect. And obviously we've left this now. This has been left for quite some time. And literally all you have to do is to go over it with the, the paint that you want. And then the crackle effect will kind of appear from then. And don't go over it too much with your brush. You do obviously have to go over it enough to, to cover it, but then once the crackling starts, then um, just sort of let the crackle do its thing. So I will leave that now because, can you see, I don't know if you can see there, but already it's starting to crackle down the bottom and it happens really, really quickly. So the, the paint, the amount of paint that I'm putting on the sides will be less than what I've put on the top and the insides because obviously I'm able to go over it a few times but what we'll do is we'll, we'll team it all in with maybe distressing it and rubbing some of the, the the cream paint off to reveal some of the brown so it will all look good you know once it's finished but as you can see it's just crackling right before our eyes so what I'm going to do obviously we want this look the same around the sides and where I put the crackle on before so I'm going to do that. The crackle effect is going to be different all the way around. You know, you never get it exactly the same. You don't know what crackle look you're going to get. Um, but I'm going to crackle all that round. That will need sealing, so we'll have to seal that as well. And then um, we'll see what stage to do next. Okie dokie. So this is crackling lovely. And it's almost dried now, so... That's coming out quite nicely. I'm really pleased with that. So that can sit to one side. I've done this part. That's the same. Got a little bit of a mark there, but I can just touch that up. That'll be fine. So that's the crackly effect so far. So what I'm going to do now is to crackle the top of this rice paper. And to do that, we need to use this two-step crackle because we're not putting technically paint over the top of it. So we've got to get the crackle effect with crackle. Use the one step first and we're going to go over here. What happens is this, this first stage dries and then we put the next one over the top. That then crackles and then we put something in the cracks to emphasise them. All right, so while that dries, we're going to distress this other part. So I don't know if you remember, we didn't put any of the crackle on that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rub different sections and this will just give it a bit more of a vintage, sort of shabby, cheeky old look. And that's why we put the brown underneath because by rubbing it, it will bring through the brown. It will just give it a bit more of an age look just so it doesn't look so clean. So again, you can use, as I've said to you before, we, you can use a cloth a wipe, something like that. You can use some sandpaper. I find the wet distress by using a wipe is easier to do. You also get less dust as well. So sometimes if you're using a piece of sandpaper, you get a bit of dust flying everywhere as well, which isn't great to contend with. But as you can see, I'm just gonna do various different sections. 
all over these sort of parts and then we'll um, distress maybe the crackle but we won't do it with this we'll put something like patina or some sort of something on the top and that will all just team it all in together I'll show you where we've got up to now I've distressed inside around the edges there so I just rubbed it in various different places just to get a different effect and I've done the same thing underneath here so I just rubbed it all the way around rubbed off certain bits of the paint and that's why we painted it brown underneath so this part now that we've put the first layer of the crackle on has dried enough so what we do next is put the second layer on I haven't distress this as yet I'm still deciding exactly what I'm going to do but I think I'm going to wet distress that and then maybe put some paste or patina over the top so we'll go over it with this two step crackle this is a second component that goes over the top and then that will start and crackle and we can do the nice little crackly effect um, over the top of it so that would be really nice that's it that's all done so we're just going to leave that to dry now I'll just put the excess back into the tub by brushing some water and so now we've got to really look at the other bits and pieces that I want to do to it do I want to how much do I want to distress it and what sort of things can we use now I've shown you these before we've got pentart the patina liquid that's really nice really like using that I also like the antique paste as well from Pentart. That's really nice stuff. And I also picked up from just um, Savers, I think it was, the Health and Beauty Shop, some cheap eyeshadow. And that would also work too. So if I just do that and rub it on there, you'll see the effect. So you don't have to buy the really expensive things if you don't want to. You can sort of get bits like that and work with those as well. So we'll leave that to completely dry then hopefully the crackles are going to come out i have brushed the top layer on differently to how i normally do it and i'm hoping it's still going to crackle if it doesn't then well i don't know what we're going to do but we'll cross that bridge when we come to it so let's put that to one side that's got to dry thoroughly and then the cracks will come out um now with this this part here what we can do is to start and put some of the paste on the antique paste so i'll just show you it's got a bit hot down here it's got a little, little mushy now if you have say for instance an eyeshadow if you wanted to use that you could sort of crumble it a little bit i haven't got anything to hand but you could kind of crumble it a little bit let's put it in shot so you can see and then you can brush those bits on the top let me just show you um, sort of put some bits over the top like that you could also if you wanted to use your finger and just go round and because the hinges are gold gold will look really cool and I think gold and cream and brown looks really nice together anyway again you can do the same thing with the paste you can go round get various bits and just sort of smudge it and rub it in and it, just do it on various bits here, there and everywhere. And that kind of ages it a little bit. You can also go round on these bits as well. So you, you don't have to just do it on the other bits, you can do it on the crackle. So do you see what I mean? That sort of thing. So I'll finish this off and do it properly. I've got to put the fan on because it's really, really hot in here. Um, and we'll see how the top turns out with a crackle as well. So with this outside bit here, I'm putting a tiny bit on my finger, rubbing a lot off so you don't get any big blobs. And I'm just very gently going around the edge of the, of the box or the book. So you can see a gold kind of trim that goes all the way around. I think that looks quite nice. And the rest of it, I've done the same sort of thing as the bottom in places put darker bits lighter bits 
um, sort of smudged it in. If I had too much, I just wiped it off with a bit of um, bit of wipe, and it just sort of gives it an all over kind of similar look. And then just put like extra bits on certain areas. But I think going around the edge of the book, the front of the book, I think that looks quite nice. And then on this part here. I'm going to get a wipe and very, very carefully, if you're really careful doing this, I'm going to wipe off certain little sections. I'm not going to do a lot. And that will give it that kind of same look with the brown underneath. And then we'll put some of this over the top of those as well. And it just kind of blends it all in together. But just be careful that you don't have too much either on your brush or on your finger if you're doing this because that's proper annoying and I always tend to mess it up on the last bit I don't know about you lot if you're doing a project you do really well and then you just mess it up right on the last little thing so I'll get the wipe here and very carefully and the amount of pressure you've got to apply just depends so always start off quite lightly because you can always apply more pressure. If you go in a bit gung-ho to start with, then, you know, you can be a little bit regretting it. So if you can see it's starting to come off there. So we'll do that. Again, just rub it in certain sections. Just to reveal the brown underneath. And just do that all the way round. When we've done that, we'll put a bit of gold on as well. Right, so I've done that. Now I'm going to put a small amount of the gold in certain sections. Just sort of a bit round. But you don't need much at all, so just be dead sparing with it. Be really careful. Right, so that is that part. Now, I can put the hardware back on now because I'm just waiting for this crackle to, to do its stuff and I'm just hoping it's going to work because I've brushed the top layer on comp completely different to how I used to brush it on um, because someone said it doesn't matter how you brush it on. So I tried it normal, but I don't know if it's going to crack or not. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave that for quite some time. I'll probably take another look at it again tomorrow. So in the meantime, I'll put on the hardware, just put the hinges on. So I'm nearly finished. So that's something that I can do now. So I'll just put that all together. And then we'll see how the top crackles um, at the end of that. These are all on, back on now. always have a bit of a fiddle trying to get these back on. It's always a bit of a pain. Um, so the hinges are all in place. Normally what I'd do is seal it at the very end, but because I'm being a bit impatient, I'm going to seal the rest of the box. It doesn't really matter. And then we'll finish the top bit as the last thing because I'm not going to, you know, really mess about much more with that. Right, so I'm going to use this polyvine wax finish varnish. I'm using the satin finish this time. So I've just poured a little bit in the lid here. So we're going to ignore the main part of the top i'll do this this bit but i won't put any on this section and we're going to go over all of it so including the rice paper at the bottom we'll go over the lot and we'll probably have to do maybe a couple of coats so this is a nice sort of sealing varnish and it will protect it and stop the bits we've put on top you know like the um, patine or the paste it will stop that coming off it will stop any of the chalk paint rubbing off and it just seals it and you won't get any more knocks and scratches. And I, they, they do a dead flat finish as well, but I thought the satin might be quite nice in this instance. And um, as I say, I'll give that a couple of coats and then I'm going to leave the top for quite some time and see if we can get that crackling up. Right, so now it's time to put the patina or the liquid patina that we're going to use on the top of the crackle. I've left it around about 24 hours, I think, and it has crackled, but I did actually have to go over it again. So I did the whole step again, and I did the normal brush strokes that I normally do. 
um, because I didn't think it was working quite as well as before. So we're going to use, as I said, this li liquid patina and you don't need too much. There it is. I've got a little brush here. I'll just dab a little bit in the brush. Now I've got um, a wet and a dry cloth at the side here just in case I need any mop ups or anything like that and as with the other item we did all you do is go in with your brush very slowly and what happens is the cracks fill with this liquid patina and that's where you get the, the kind of the crackle look over the top so I'll just finish doing this and then this is where you see how many crackles you've got and kind of how it's worked and then I'll rub it off and um, then we'll just seal the top of it and then that will be it completely done and I'll show you it all finished at the end. Right, I'm also going to put some of the antique paste on as well um, so I'll put some bits on and then kind of just rub it off and it will just bring out a bit more of the kind of the gold colour as well and then we are just needing to seal it and I'll use the same which one did I use the satin did we use satin finish yeah so I use the satin finish so I'll be putting a layer of that or layer or two of that over the top that just seals it and just stops any colours sort of disappearing or any of the colours coming onto it and protects it um and that guys is around about it so I'll just finish doing that. I'll put the varnish on and then I'll be all done. There we go. So it's all done. The light's a little bit shiny. So uh, sorry about that. There's a bit of a glare on top of it. But um, that's it all finished and all sealed on the top as well. So I hope you've enjoyed watching this video. I hope I've inspired you to maybe have a go as well. So you can look on the works on their website. But if you don't have other works near you, then maybe you could just look for something similar Maybe in your country, um, you know, there's other bits and pieces you can buy. Maybe there's stuff on Amazon or eBay and um, you could give this a go. I've really enjoyed doing it, as always, and I really enjoy showing you guys as well. And um, it's, sometimes it's a little bit of a learning curve for us all together. So that's it for me. I hope you've enjoyed it, as I say, and I will see you all again soon. Now you take care and I'll see you again. Bye for now.